send Bravo. We're reading 70 bogeys in your sector. Please verify. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Russian invasion, the beginning of World War III that was presented to us in 2009's Modern Warfare 2. Here in the series outside, we can use a little bit of noclip to discover some hidden details across Northeast Virginia and even put together some hints at a secret storyline found within these missions. We may have a minor ACS fault here. Do you have anything on your scope? Sierra Delta, repeat. I'm looking at fighter jets over I-95. How the hell did they get through? Stand by, attempting to contact the nearest unit in that sector. I read you. This is 1st Battalion, 75th Ranger Regiment. Sergeant Foley, acting commander of Hunter 2-1. You copy, over. All stations be advised. Satellite surveillance The first mission that shows this Russian invasion is called Wolverines, and you start off inside of a Humvee going down the streets of Northeast Virginia. All the while, Russian paratroopers are falling in from above, landing on civilians' homes and... You can see the planes flying above you. And at the end of this road, you run into a BTR, which stops you dead in your tracks. You dismount your Humvee and immediately run for cover. But of course, using some no clip and of course a little bit of God mode to get past this bad boy right here, we can take a look at this area from a very different perspective. And it's a really cool area. I mean, this map in general is, because this really does just look like suburbia to me. I mean, it's it's very familiar being an American, and I'm sure it's also very familiar to a lot of you guys as well. There's nothing really inside of any of these houses. They don't have interiors, unfortunately, which, I mean, that would have been amazing, right? But they do have quite a bit of detail on the exterior. Like, I mean, honestly, especially some of these ones that you really don't see, I mean, like this one at all, I mean, you can't turn around in the Humvee, but it's still there. And it still has some garbage out front, a mailbox, and... Looks like someone's been trimming the hedges. And of course, you can walk out here as well, which is always awesome, even though you only drive through here in the Humvee. There's full collision, even with like these buildings, for instance. And of course, we can hop right outside the map right over here and see the same is the case out here as well. In fact, the collision of this map continues very far out of the distance. At the end of this road, there is a texture that looks like a child was messing around with some watercolors, but even it too, has collision. You can walk on all of this and it continues for a very far distance where there's some buildings and skyscrapers just hanging out there far outside the map. Now I could be wrong because I don't exactly know how developers go about making a map like this, but it looks like this bad looking texture was like taken from Google Maps or something. This really looks like an overhead view of some place in America. I mean, probably Northeast Virginia. And you can see this major highway here in the middle, which is extremely, I mean, a 2D texture out here. You can see back here inside the map, the developers actually started constructing this highway. Although, I mean, it's not like the most beautiful thing in the world. It's literally just a slab of concrete. So it really does look like they took a Google Maps picture of Northeast Virginia, placed some buildings on top of it, as well as, I mean, the highway here too. I don't know if this applies to the inside the map space. I don't think it does. This definitely seems very custom. Although it could be the case that they cut out a little section right here and this is actually modeled after a real neighborhood. Also, the BTR has an interior. I just wanted to point that out. But hopping back on the ground here, we can follow Sergeant Foley through the backyard of someone's house, past a dog house, as Russian soldiers are still parachuting in from above. Be advised, we have encountered enemy armor and are proceeding on foot. Over. Overlord copies all. Good luck. Out. Sarge, did HQ just tell us to go up for ourselves? Hold your fire. Don't engage that BTR. They haven't acquired us. And as you just heard, our mission, although interrupted by a BTR, is to proceed on foot towards what we will eventually find out is the crash site of a helicopter. And in doing this, we're trying to avoid a BTR the entire way. I got a visual on the smoke coming from the crash site. That's where Raptor went down. We're spotted. Ramirez, use your smoke grenades. Done, Morgan, cover him. Throw a smoke grenade on that BTR. But eventually this BTR spots us, and in order to escape death, we throw some smoke grenades, blocking its view and escaping into an alleyway. But using a bit of no clip, of course, there is a lot that we just passed up, and one thing we'll immediately notice is that BTR is no longer here. 
And I mean, I suppose it makes sense it has to go somewhere because, I mean, it could definitely still kill you in this alleyway. A little bit of a plot hole, isn't it? Oh my god. But if we fly our way down these suburbia streets, we can find that BTR all the way over here. Still shooting at us and still as angry as ever. And what is pretty interesting about this map is it's not technically out of bounds where the BTR is. I mean, this is right here where you run through, and as you can see, of course, there's collision here. And I mean, you could theoretically run this direction towards the BTR if you wanted to, although obviously it would kill you. But I mean, I suppose what's more interesting is that there's so much space out here that you can just walk right on through as if it's part of the map. And it really makes me wonder why there isn't a bigger fight in this area. It feels like there should be, and there's tons of modeling out here. It ends over here at a cul-de-sac that is missing a house. It feels like there should be one in this direction, but there isn't. But looking back this direction, of course, we have a whole lot of details. Even a little shed here with individual stones placed going towards it. I mean, for how old of a game this is, the amount of detail in some places that you probably would never see is kind of insane. It definitely seems to me like they were originally planning on having more of this as part of the mission, and I guess they just decided not to have it, and instead, your team just kind of walks through some backyards here and makes their way on towards that crash site. I mean, I gotta find out, right? Can we hop on the trampoline? Okay, it seems to break my legs. That's unfortunate. Although, what I'm noticing here is there is actually an interior for this building, although, I mean, it's not exactly furnished, but hey, there is some space here, and there's definitely textures around as well. There's even some pictures here on the wall, and if we go through this wall right here, we can find yet another room that faces out towards the street. And something similar, although it's not nearly as detailed, can be said about this house that's right where we dismount our Humvees. If we go through the top window here on the second floor, we can see there is a very tiny interior space, and the rest of it is just absolutely nothingness. Although, hey, look at that below the map. It's a dead soldier. That is... that's unfortunate. Look, there's his gun. My guy has the heartbeat sensor, he's got the thermal optic, and he's got the noob tube, and a suppressor. Dude, he's running every attachment in the game. He's got Bling Pro Pro, dude. Oh my god. Alright, now I'm like checking house by house, and I'm noticing there's actually a lot of these little interior rooms. There's even one right here with like a little desk and stuff, and I don't think you would ever notice that this exists, to be completely honest with you. I mean, it even has this room with a picture on the wall that, I mean, what, some like Japanese writing on it? I'm not sure why this is here. I mean, I played this mission many times, and I've never noticed that that building had an interior. And, like, for instance, this window right here, you don't even pass by this location on the street, right? This is where that BTR stops you in your tracks and you go off behind the buildings. So there's, like, no reason for you to be here near the Terrace Apartments. I mean, there's all of this space that you can walk through. It is technically playable space, but you don't ever use it. And I'm not criticizing that. I think it's awesome. I actually really love the idea of having a playable space that's much larger than you actually need for the mission. It really makes you feel, again, like you're in suburbia, like this is a real place in Northeast Virginia, and you're really fighting off Russians that are invading. And as it turns out, when we go inside the map here and we start looking at a lot of these buildings, there is a ton of interiors, such as this one right here for this little blue house, we hop on inside of it. Yet again, there is a fully made interior here. Although the building's not modeled, there's no furniture or anything like that, it's all here. But why the one over there that you barely ever walk past, or for instance, this trailer right here, which again, has a full interior. And if you've played this game's multiplayer, the DLC map trailer park, that'll look very familiar to you because this model is definitely used in that map. And even over here near where the BTR is resting, there's an interior here as well. Although, I mean, it's not nearly as nice as the other ones. It's pretty much just one large room with a couple of walls that are invisible. Is anybody home? Hello? You guys in there? Hello? Hey. Hey, what's going on? Hello? But here's one last view from above at this area before we continue onward towards the crash site. If we make our way back to the ground here, we can follow up through the alleyway and reunite with our unit. And after taking down some Russian dismounts, we make our way past a gas station towards the downed helicopter just outside of Nate's restaurant. Give me a 
And after meeting with a team that's on the ground there, we're tasked with going to the roof to check out a supply drop that has a sentry gun. And this immediately kicks off essentially a little defend mission as Russians try and storm in and overtake your position. And as you just heard, Raptor, which is, I suppose, someone who was inside this helicopter, is inside of the meat locker here at Nate's restaurant, which if you go inside of it, you can actually find him just chilling with a business suit on. And beforehand, Raptor is sitting inside of that meat locker along with a random named soldier just guarding the door. And it does seem that Corporal Dunn does actually come in here and try and apply aid to Raptor as well. Which, right after you go to the roof and trigger that checkpoint, the door closes to the meat locker and all the AI other than Raptor himself disappear. Originally when I played this, I assumed Raptor was like the pilot or something, but looking at him now, I don't think that's the case. It seems like he's some high profile person that you're trying to rescue. The game does not make this obvious whatsoever. He might be a politician of some sort, I'm not entirely sure. But one thing that will become important for the next mission, Exodus, is his character model, so keep that in mind for now. And there's a ton of things to check out in this area, and we will in just a second. But I want to point out something for you guys who don't have access to Noclip. If you take the sentry gun and walk it all the way back to the start of the mission, which, I mean, it's going to take a second, but you'll get there eventually. And when you do, there's a little shed here in the corner. If you hop up on this pile of wood, you can place the turret down, get up on top of it, hop on top of the shed, and then outside the map. And doing this little glitch, you can explore a huge amount of what I'm about to show you. But flying on back over here, using a bit of no clip makes this a lot easier. But I suppose, first of all, let's just take a little look at the layout of this map. We got a little taco fast food area over here. Taco to go, which you can actually go inside of, and I believe inside of here, yeah, there's an Intel laptop. I mean, this is clearly supposed to be a Taco Bell, right? And they sell burgers? What? And then, of course, we have the Burger Town, which, at least to me, screams Burger King, although I don't know if that's exactly right. Oh my god, $2 each. A steal. And then going towards the location where our guys are holding out on top of Nate's restaurant. Which, I mean, seems like, I don't know, like a Friday's, some kind of chain restaurant in Applebee's, I'm not entirely sure. But it definitely feels American. Towards the north of this compound, you also have a bank here, which you barely go to in this. Actually, I don't think you go to it at all. Mainly enemies spawn here, however, there is a very nice interior to this building. And again, there's an Intel laptop here. This map is very clearly one of those cases that it's just insane how much there is inside of the playable space that just is not used by the mission. But if we head on outside the map, the first thing we'll notice other than this massive roadway is of course a highway right here, which is I-95. Well, actually I-395 that goes towards 95? Is that what's happening here? I suppose so. The reason I mention that, though, is because this highway was mentioned in the intro of this mission. I just find that pretty cool that you're actually going to this area, and they kind of tie it all together for you. To the right in the distance, again, we can see many more buildings just hanging on out there. And once again, all of this has collision. You can walk all the way there. And again, it definitely looks like the highway matches up with this little, like, Google Earth image down below. Although it seems that they put some buildings like right in the middle of it. And if we look towards the left, we can see that it's pretty much the same thing. Although there's a lot more buildings in the distance, it feels like you're going towards the city this direction. And as we make our way towards the sunset, I'm going to take a sip of the coffee. Because of course, I have my coffee with me here this morning. I hope wherever you are, whatever time you're watching this, you're enjoying yourself. Because I absolutely love looking at missions like this. Modern Warfare 2 campaign, I mean, the Modern Warfare trilogy in general is one of the best storytellings that's ever been done in Call of Duty. I absolutely love these missions. They made my childhood, and being able to go through here and no clip through them now, it's an amazing experience. I hope you guys are enjoying, and if you are, consider leaving a like down below. It helps me out a ton, and of course, make sure you're subscribed so you can come back for more. Without further ado, let's get back in there. Right on the other side of this main street is a like warehouse retail space as well, 
And this is definitely out of the map space. Like, you can't normally get here. But it is awesome to be able to walk here. And there's even an interior to this little gas station. Although, I mean, there's not much going on in here. But hey, you got some bathrooms and even a little counter. Inside this warehouse, there is absolutely nothing. There's just a massive parking lot out here. Although, there isn't any, like, painting on the ground for the parking spaces. Which looks really strange now that I'm looking at that, actually. But if we continue down the road, I suppose, actually, 78th Avenue, we find more houses and a whole lot more modeling out here. Even though, again, you don't go out here whatsoever. Although, unlike before, it definitely seems very cookie cutter. I mean, this is literally the same exact house, copied and pasted next to each other. Which, I mean, then again, a lot of American neighborhoods are the same exact house, copied and pasted next to each other, like in real life. I mean, I suppose they can't just copy and paste it, but you know what I'm trying to say. And I'm not sure what's going on here, but there's also this massive concrete wall that separates what would have been a road leading towards more of that neighborhood area and the actual neighborhood area that you get to play in over here near this water tower. And in between the two is some very, like, dead area. It's just a big old open field here, which is very well detailed. Like, it looks like an area that you could walk through or drive through, maybe. And at the end, there's even, like, a jump here. So, yeah, not exactly sure why this is here. It definitely is unused, unfortunately, in the final version of the mission. But it feels like it was going to serve a purpose at one point. But anyways, we're tasked with going to Joe's Diner, which is another one of these buildings that I guess I didn't really mention yet. But inside of Joe's Diner, thankfully, is a Predator drone. We can go ahead and open up our laptop after taking down a few soldiers. And destroy the BTRs. And, uh, I got a feeling I'll need this later, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go ahead and pick that up right now. And after taking out those BTRs, you're supposed to go on over towards Nate Restaurant and regroup with Sergeant Foley. Which, during this time, if we fly on in here, we can see we do have Private Wells, as well as Sergeant Foley here, fighting on the first floor of the restaurant. And inside the meat locker, there still is Raptor. But unfortunately, if we do try and walk towards this restaurant, a trigger gets pulled... And enemy jets come in to bomb it. And what is pretty cool is it looks like they are actually moving Raptor as well. Again, another detail I don't think I ever noticed while playing this mission. But currently our goal is to clear Burger Town for them so they can move on over and not have to worry about enemy fire. Squad, be advised. We're gonna move Raptor from Nate's to the Burger Town as a group. Sergeant Foley takes Raptor over his shoulders and starts hauling him towards the Burger Town. Squad, I've made it to the Burger Town meat locker. He goes through the back, puts him inside of the Burger Town meat locker, and shuts the door, and then disappears. And actually, both of them disappear. They're, they're both just gone now. Now, as for Sergeant Foley, I'm not exactly sure where he just teleported to, but, I mean, at least at this point in the mission, it seems like he's nowhere to be found. But oh my god, the amount of people you can kill with this thing. It's insane, dude. If you pull it out right when they spawn, too, they're all just together. Nuts. But of course the fun can't last forever. Someone eventually takes out that Predator drone and we gotta start doing the dirty work. I mean, there's something distinctly American about defending off a Russian invasion on top of a fast food restaurant. But eventually, after a while, the enemy calls in some helicopters for support, and we're tasked to take them out. Well, luckily I got this good old Stinger missile here. Oh, oh god, grenade. Holy... Nice work. That heli 
But after you take down the helicopters, a convoy starts moving on down the road. And if we go ahead and get up early, we can see that they literally hop over the barricade to get inside the map. That's kind of hilarious. This convoy consists of a few Humvees and a few Bradleys as well to support them. And of course, this is our way out. And the Bradley also has an interior as well, although it's, it's pretty tiny. It's just literally two seats. But before we make our way to the convoy, let's just get one last good look at this map. As amazing as it was, this mission is very strange for Call of Duty. It's not extremely linear, although, I mean, I suppose it is linear, but there's a lot of running back and forth over a very large open space. Or at least, what was definitely a large space for the time. A huge playable area, one that is much larger than it needs to be making you wonder what the original plan was for this mission, but that's not for me to find out. Let's go ahead, hop down on the street, because this invasion is certainly not over. As you just heard, we're now heading to Arcadia. Our goal is to assist in the evacuation of civilians, as well as some key personnel in the region. In a second mission during the early days of this Russian invasion called Exodus. My task force is out of the country. I'm commandeering your unit, Sergeant Foley. Yes, sir. All yours, sir. I've requisitioned a striker from the 8th Armored. She'll walk you in. The Russians are burning through our defenses and our intel. Can't let them take this corner. Just point it out on the map, sir. They won't hit you. Hunter 2 1. This is Hunter 2 1 Echo. Our evac choppers are taking heavy losses from burning fire. We gotta Let's destroy those go, go. so we can get the rest of the city out of here. Let's go! Your squad is tasked by General Shepard to accompany a striker through the streets of northeastern Virginia. Assisting with the evacuation of civilians, neutralizing some anti-aircraft guns, and eventually attempting to secure some high-value personnel. This mission starts off a lot like the last one, again, just here on the streets of some suburban town. And immediately zooming out, we could just take a look at this map. It's a lot smaller than the last one, and it also has a lot less playable space. It's extremely linear. Unlike Wolverines, it definitely feels like this mission was crafted for its intended purpose. And as you can see, much like other Call of Duty missions, it doesn't stray very far from that. It's made up of two parts, this first area that you go through with the striker, leading on past a bridge, through some more mansions, I suppose. I mean, some very wealthy housing. And then there's a second part that only pops into existence when you get close enough, where it looks like an American C-130 has crashed. And what is pretty cool to see, although it's not possible to have the two areas open at the same time, the end of the mission that's over there does connect via this road right here with the beginning of the mission. We can follow this road on back and it leads us all the way back towards where we're supposed to be right now. And working down the street, we can see that a lot of these houses are the same as ones from before. And it could be that this is the reason why those other houses had interiors in the first place because I'm pretty sure this is one of the ones that we've walked through. Although obviously in this mission, since you can actually go inside of them, they are much more detailed and they actually have furniture, full kitchen and things of the sort. Oh, but the striker does not have an interior. That's unfortunate. Get off the street. Use the houses for cover. We got hostiles in the yellow house. Squad, put some fire on the house. But back on the ground, we're fighting house to house trying to fend off the Russian invasion. All the while, lazing targets for our striker to fix his 50 cal on. But finally, we make our way to the apartments, the garden villas, apparently, where there is a massive buildup of Russian soldiers, and of course, we need to designate to take them out. This apartment area is pretty cool. I mean, it doesn't exactly have much of an interior going on, but inside, there are like a few empty little hallways, such as this one and the one below it, but there isn't like a ton of hidden details. However, behind it, there is this big old parking lot that we could just walk through. It's extremely empty. And looking at the back of these apartments, it's extremely liminal. Also, Intel laptop. Sick. 
And it's honestly crazy again. I mean, I, I feel like I keep mentioning this, but the amount of interior space on this mission is pretty nuts. I think a lot of it is used to spawn the enemy AI, but it's pretty insane just how much there is. And I mean, most of it, I don't think I would think to go into as the player. But after the apartments, we reach a little, like, checkpoint area where the striker stops for a bit, and we're supposed to move up and take out some targets for him. But before we do, of course, there is some out-of-bound space here. Let's go ahead and check it out. It's a very short road, and I mean, again, there is very little out-of-bound space in this mission in general. It's extremely linear, unlike the last one. But looking out these houses, they do not have collision. You can fall right on through them, and inside, it doesn't seem like any of them really have much of an interior. But nevertheless, it is always cool to check out some areas that you never could have gotten to before. But there is also this little cul-de-sac over here that we passed up as well, which is pretty cool, so we might as well take a look at it. It consists of a couple houses just scattered about, and it looks like none of them do have any interiors. Again, they're pretty much just like half-made houses. But nevertheless, it is pretty cool, and also right behind them is a random floating house out here. Not sure why this is, but uh, it's definitely here. But making our way to the checkpoint, we can lay some more targets for the striker. Which, oh my god, there's a lot of them. They're really not shooting very accurately at all without me doing that, are they? It's kind of insane. You know, they have an optic system that is extremely good, but for some reason they can't hit anything. It's kind of nuts. That's Call of Duty for you. But past this, of course, we make our way through the gateway to Arcadia, which is, I guess, a checkpoint towards, like, a richer part of the neighborhood. That's what it seems like to me. And it's infested with Russian soldiers. And an Intel laptop. Nice. Hunter 2 1 actual. Overlord, give me a sit rep. Over. We just passed the enemy blockade at Checkpoint Lima. Now proceeding into Arcadia. Over. Roger that. I have new orders for you. This comes down from the top. Over. Your team is to divert to 4677 Bookmere Road after you have eliminated the AAA. Solid copy, Overlord. Divert to 4677 Brookmere Road once the guns are destroyed. Got it. Check back with me when you've completed your main objective. Overlord out. And on our way into Arcadia, we get orders to divert to 4677 Brookmere Road after eliminating the AAA, the anti-air guns that are located on the golf course just up ahead. And right before this bridge, there are a couple roads here that lead off into the distance, so let's just check out where this one goes. Seems like it slithers on around the corner and just eventually ends up going nowhere. There is a little river next to it, though, which is kind of cool, and a few more buildings that, I mean, aren't exactly made, but hey, they're there, and they're standing in in a place that you barely get to see. And I suppose it's also probably important to note that this is Brookmere Road that we're on, and flying on through here, it does make sense. I mean, that does actually line up. This Brookmere Road continues and slithers its way towards that crash site. And after you pass up this checkpoint while those voice lines are going on about 4677 Brookmere Road, there's something very subtle but interesting going on in the sky, and that being a C-130 getting shot down by those anti-aircraft guns. I think this is supposed to be the same plane that crashes into the house, considering that's exactly where it crashes, although it does it from a very different angle than the one on the map seems to have done. Now, this area of the mission I actually know quite well, and it's mainly because of Spec Ops. There's a Spec Ops mission on this where me and a buddy went through it so many times, time after time, trying to get better and better at it, because we were weirdos like that that actually enjoyed Spec Ops. I feel like a lot of people didn't care about Spec Ops in this game, by the way, and it was fantastic, man. So I'm very familiar with the interiors of some of these buildings, fighting through them, and finding the Intel laptop. But there's something to be said about this part, where there's, like, massive, multi-million dollar homes here. A war like this reaches everyone. If World War III like this actually broke out, it doesn't matter how much money you have, what kind of secured neighborhood you lived in, it'll reach every single American and, I mean, probably every single person around the globe. Everyone move up! And passing up these houses, we get an eye on the AAA, which after moving through one of these mansions, we can get a shot on it. Mission received. Artillery inbound. Is confirmed. We call in artillery and drill them. Overlord, Hunter 2-1 actual. AAA has been neutralized. 
We're heading to 4677 Brick Bay Road. Interrogative. What exactly are we looking for? Over. Sergeant Foley, this is General Shepard. Your objective is to extract a high-value individual from a panic room on the second floor of that house. Yes, sir. He'll be expecting you. Challenge is Ice Pit. Countersign is Phoenix. Get him out of there. Report back to Overlord. Shepard out. All right. You heard the man. 4677 Brook Bear Road. Move. After destroying the artillery, our goal is 4677 Brookmere Road. And we just got a little bit more intel. It's a high-value individual who's expecting us with a challenge of ice pick. But before we do, let's just take a look at this area, because I think this is the largest out-of-bound space that there is, this, like, golf course area. It seems that we blew up some AAA that's just chilling on the green, which is unfortunate. This is a very nice golf course. And oh my god, the amount of blood inside of that sand pit, dude. The fairway here of the golf course is extremely large, actually, and it leads off into the distance with a few other houses here just scattered along the side. But unlike Wolverines, where the collision was literally everywhere outside the map, here there is very little collision. In fact, it drops off rather quickly. Again, I'm not a game developer, so I don't exactly know why this is the case, but I do find it rather strange, and it's in contrast with the mission that was right before it. I've also always wondered where the striker goes after you no longer need it. So let's see if we can figure that one out. So first of all, it definitely does follow you all the way up to here. And, and this is its last position that you can see it, at least normally playing the game. And when you go inside the building and start clearing through it, I imagine somewhere during this is where it pops out of existence. Still there. Okay. Okay, it's gone now. So it seems that that checkpoint right there is what makes it disappear, and it does just disappear. It doesn't reverse like that BTR did on the other mission. It seems to be gone, and there's nowhere to find it. And I imagine the reason why it disappears at this checkpoint is because now you use that same laser designator that you were using for the striker to call an artillery on the anti-aircraft gun. So I suppose in order to make this function work, they had to delete the striker, I suppose. But of course, right after this, We've made our way to the house. It's just right down the street, after all. And we can see that we have a U.S. Air Force C-130 crashed into the side of it. Before going into the building, however, there is some area to check out. Of course, there's this big old driving range here, which is pretty cool to see. But not only that, there is also some area over here, out of bounds, that we don't get to go to, that you can just kind of see as you'd make your way into the house. But unfortunately, just like before, the collision drops off rather quickly. But we can take a look at some of these houses here and see it doesn't seem like they have interiors, unfortunately. And yeah, same for this house as well. Oh wow, and they're growing trees in the middle of the road. New technology, I guess. And just to put this all together, it seems like a C-130 was flying over this airspace here where it was shot somewhere around this area. In its wake, it leaves behind a whole bunch of these, like, crates that they don't have anything inside of them, but, I mean, you could imagine what could have been there. And inside the house, a Russian soldier... Looking for some food. But as we make our way upstairs, we find the HVT. Something's not right here. Check the panic room. Move. No sign of force entry. Ramirez, get that briefcase. What's left of it? Inside the panic room, we see a teddy bear on a chair playing a game of chess which this reminds me of Black Ops 1 a lot. If you don't know, this same chess game, in fact, the pieces are in the exact same place, are on Black Ops 1 Kino with a teddy bear across from what could have been, I suppose, Samantha playing. So for those who like zombies, this is extremely relevant. And this really makes me wonder whether there was originally going to be zombies in MW2, but that might be a bit of a stretch. And as far as the HVT, it looks like he has pretty much the same model as Raptor did for the last mission. He had a Desert Eagle in his hand when he died, and as well, a phone. But there's also a briefcase here for us to pick up, which if we get up close, we can see IW on it. And Modern Warfare 2, Never Die, Infinity Education. Man, this game really did never die, man. I, I, I know everyone who has played this game still looks back on it fondly, and I'm sure a lot of you guys probably want to go back to it once in a while as well. It's just a masterpiece. But let's go ahead, end this mission, pick up the briefcase, and tell Overlord that our HVI is dead. 
Not your average trooper, who are? Who are? Get a couple of photos for G2, and check the bodies for intel. Who are? Shepard's not gonna like this. Overlord, the HBI is dead. The game never explains who this HVI is, but even from the very beginning of the game, if we fly on over there, past a bunch of Blackhawks moving through the air, we can fly on up into 4677 Brookmere Road and see that we were always going to be too late. Although, the body actually isn't here ahead of time, which is kind of interesting. But if we head back to the mission and cross into Arcadia, as I said before, this triggers a C-130 to be shot out of the sky and crash. Which, after that crash, is when the body of Raptor appears here in the safe room. And if you get up close and personal, you'll notice that this is the exact same model that was used for Raptor in Wolverines. So I think there's a secret storyline going on here, and that this is actually Raptor, the person you just saved in the last mission that you played as Ramirez. And here we are just a few hours later, he got shot down immediately by anti-aircraft guns and murdered inside of a safe room by some special operations soldiers. In fact, you even hear at the end, Corporal Dunn talk about this guy not being your average Russian soldier. Sorry, check out these tats. Not your average trooper, who are. So I'm not sure who Raptor is. This seems to be some sort of secret story of Modern Warfare 2. And I guess that's something that we never will find out. I'm not sure if there was like a cut mission that was supposed to explain this, perhaps. But it's clear that General Shepard is the only one that knows. And also, if we go outside of this panic room, just through the walls here, we'll notice there's a lot more of it that isn't used, which is kind of strange. I suppose they probably just placed some of this here in case they wanted to use it, and then modeled the rest of the building around it. Fitting in what they needed, where they needed it, and you can even see for like these TVs, for instance, well, they're encased again by more metal sheeting. And there's also more to the upstairs of this house, although it's rather liminal, and there's not really any modeling up here, but you can get a peek of the cockpit of the plane that has crashed. And there's also this weird looking transparent doorway, which from the other side you can see there is an actual door here, and it makes you wonder whether they were planning on having more room here and just decided, well, it isn't needed for the mission, so no need to make it. And right across the hallway from this door is another one, which through it, Again, there is another room here. This one is a lot better textured, at least for the floors and the walls as well. But again, there's no modeling, just part of the plane sticking through. But that is it for me here, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys enjoyed this little comb through of the Russian invasion. There was a lot of really cool details to see across these two missions. There's something about fighting through Northern Virginia, some very recognizable suburbs. Really makes you start to feel and consider how horrible a full-scale World War III would be. If you did enjoy any of it, consider leaving a like down below. It helps me out a ton, and of course, make sure you're subscribed so you can come back for more. If you want to watch more of my content, you can click one of the videos on your screen right now, but if not, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Stay awesome, and peace out.